Five things the Buddha advised if you want to think for yourself. Do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down for many generations. Do not believe in anything because it is spoken and rumored by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious books. Do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers and elders. As Henry David Thoreau once said, think for yourself or others will think for you without thinking of you. Now in our culture, we've been trained for individual differences to stand out. So you look at each person, immediate hit is brighter, dumber, older, younger, richer, poorer, and we make all these dimensional dis distinctions, put them in categories and treat them that way. And we get so that we only see others as separate from ourselves in the ways in which they're separate. And one of the dramatic characteristics of the psychedelic experience is being with another person and suddenly seeing the ways in which they are like you, not different from you. One of the most important parts of me protecting my own energy and understanding the laws of magic in the universe is realizing that once things connect, when they are separated, they are still in communication. The essences of one thing is still another thing, whether that be you to another person, whether it be you to an entity, an entity to you, whether it be this coin to a floor. Once they are separated, they still communicate on some level. Some of this is talking to that, and some of that is talking to this on a quantum level, an energetic level, a mental level, or emotional level. Something to know and think about. But you'll see people that sound like, <clears throat> you don't understand, you're still stuck in the matrix. Well, one time I did acid, and now I understand what God, you don't understand. Maybe one day you will when you drop acid with me. Eh, these people don't get it. You'll understand one day when you're woke. Um, I don't think your third eye is open, that's why. <laughs> you want to be cautious of these people and to make sure it does not become you because understand everybody is on their own individual journey. We're all here to grow. Do not shame others if they are not at the same level of understanding. Reframe a popularly accepted idea in less than 10 seconds. I'll go first. It's so much less important that you know who you are and so much more important that you love that you are. One of the fastest ways to become completely present is to just repeat the phrase in your mind, no expectations. Because your brain is always trying to calculate what's coming next, trying to anticipate, trying to figure it out. So if you just repeat no expectations, it automatically erases what's coming in front of you, drops the positive expectations, drops the negative expectations, and just becomes completely present. Try it now and see how you feel. Being authentic has nothing to do with judging whether or not your expression was authentic or not. It actually has nothing to do with your preferences, your likes, dislikes, your past actions. Authenticity is an emergent property. It's what naturally sort of shows up from the deepest parts of ourselves when we're being off of ourselves. We're not attaching to who we thought we were supposed to be, fearing the future, reacting to thoughts and emotions and stuff from outside. When we're most accepting, when we're most present, what bubbles up? is authenticity, but that only emerges from now. To connect our authenticity to the past, like trying to bring a past moment into this moment and recreate it, it, it don't work. Who you were back then is not who you are now. What was necessary back then isn't what's necessary now. You don't limit yourself from like who you used to be or who you think you're supposed to be. It allows you to be who you need to be right now in this moment. And for me, that's, that's really freeing. So take it, have a good day. So if you're looking for a few books to start reading for the new year, here are my four recommendations. So my first one would be the Yusa Guide. This one goes over the mind, the body, and the spirit. Really good book and not one detail left out. Second, you have The Power of Now, which teaches you about the law of detachment and enlightenment as well. Third, you have How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a book that teaches you about social skills more than anything. Lastly, The Human Laws of Nature, a very psychological book that I recommend to everyone technique to lift your overall mood and raise your vibration. Stop negative self-talk. Uninterrupted negative self-talk is like chemical waste leaking all over the garden of your mind. Killing the daisies and ruining your mental manifestation crops. 
Don't forget that the mind is more fertile than the ground. Be careful with what you plant. If you're aware of your self-sabotaging behaviors but you still do them, this is for you. The reason why you most likely still do these behaviors is because the parts of you that you know that want to stay in this habit do not feel safe yet. You haven't spent enough time with this part for it to release the resistance that it's having on you. What you're probably doing is demanding of it to change. That's not what we should be doing. We have to literally sit with these parts as if they're children, to acknowledge them, to understand them, not to try and change them. We have to focus on releasing the resistance that it has on the need for change. And if you become frustrated and you start to hate this, it is not gonna help you. You are not gonna be able to change it. Remember, this is a part of you that is just trying to keep you safe. And if you are not giving the proper signals to it, it's not gonna change. It's gonna keep pulling you back into these behaviors. All advice is contextual, based on psychology and circumstance, while supported by fundamental laws of nature. In other words, black and white does exist, and it manifests in infinite shades of gray. In every moment, you are presented an opportunity to change. This is a reflection of you. How conscious can you be? Can you spot the opportunity in a hard turn of reality? How do you feel in this moment? 